No sooner is Christmas 2015 finished than the tech industry begins to turn its gaze to what gadgets might be filling people's stockings come Christmas 2016. So here are my handful of predictions for what will be big in tech this year. First up, virtual reality. Now, the VR bandwagon has been poised for what seems like an eternity now, but it looks like 2016 will be the year in which virtual reality finally becomes actual reality. Major tech firms have been investing heavily in VR, seeing it as the next big platform, and understandably they're keen to get it right and not repeat the mistakes of previous major tech ventures. 3D television, I'm looking at you. After months of teasing, Facebook, through its high-profile acquisition of VR poster boy Oculus VR, along with Sony and HTC, are all bringing out their consumer VR headsets to the market in the first half of this year. Microsoft will eventually be joining the party too, fashionably late it hopes, with its slightly different take on virtual and augmented reality, the Microsoft HoloLens. Expect a steady growth in mobile VR using smartphones like Google Cardboard, for example, as well. But is virtual reality actually going to change our world? Well, probably not immediately, but with a firm footing in the games and entertainment industries and inevitably in pornography, but that's a whole other conversation, then in 2016 we'll see the first major steps towards mainstream acceptance. I think Christmas next year will be make or break for consumer virtual reality. Now, biometrics. Passwords will stop working in 2016. Because if all of the high-profile data breaches and hacks of 2015 taught us anything, it's that usernames and passwords no longer work in a world where we all have to remember an increasing number of logins to access our digital lives. And why should we have to remember them when better, faster, more secure means of authentication are right here at the tips of our fingers? Fingerprint scanners in smartphones and tablets have come on leaps and bounds over the last couple of years. Driven in part by improved security and by mobile payments, they're found in an increasing number of devices, both Google Android as well as Apple iOS with Touch ID, but also in Windows with Windows Hello that can look at your face and your iris to securely identify you too. More of that this year, please. Now, mobile and digital payments. Some parts of the world are well on their way to ditching the wallet and going cashless. Contactless payments with credit or debit cards are already pretty widespread in many countries, but 2014 and then really 2015 saw the launch of the first truly compelling mobile payment system, Apple Pay. And now with Android Pay and Samsung Pay, there's more and more following suit too. So 2016 could be the beginning of the end for the banknote. And after a relatively quiet 2015 in the media, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin will once again stake their claim to be a serious currency for the internet economy. Even if Bitcoin itself has bitten off more than it can chew, many other financial institutions, including the Bank of England and major exchanges like Nasdaq, have been taking a long, hard look how the underlying blockchain technology can transform money as we know it. Let's hope it's all change for loose change in 2016. Next, the Internet of Things. Now, really, this is all about embedding computing power and connectivity into everyday objects, digitally connecting people with their possessions and perhaps their possessions with one another. Now, motoring, interesting case. Historically, it's trodden its own path. I guess the longer refresh cycles for cars hasn't always been a good fit with the consumer tech industry's upgrade every 18 months model. Now, not really all that long ago, if your car had a CD player or a DAB radio, it was considered quite posh. But with all the tech we now have in our homes and in our pockets, we expect it to be in our cars too. And car manufacturers will continue to have to keep pace with that. But it's also interesting how traditional consumer tech brands have now begun to move into motoring. Google has been experimenting with driverless cars for quite some time. And if rumours are to be believed, Apple and Amazon are testing the waters, or rather roads, too. Chances are there'll be some partnerships, big partnerships, announced between established car manufacturers and software firms. So Google doesn't have a worldwide manufacturing base that you would need to bring driverless cars out at scale. So it would make sense to partner with a firm that does. So expect an announcement or two along those lines this coming year. Next, drones. 
Now, French firm Parrot struck gold when it unveiled the AR drone at CES in 2010, introducing the first affordable camera-equipped smartphone control consumer-ready quadcopter. Let's face it, drones just a bit easier to say. Six years on, and our appetite for drones doesn't seem to have slowed, with many dozens of high-end and budget models still now available. Now, while the payload on consumer drones is usually nothing more taxing than a camera, Amazon has been experimenting with using drones to augment its delivery fleet in some areas. Facebook, too, has just begun testing its unmanned aerial vehicles. Aquila is a solar-powered flying wing, which stays airborne at 90,000 feet for up to three months at a time and will eventually form part of an intelligent network that beams internet access to remote areas. Now, inevitably, drones receive their fair share of negative press in 2015 too. I mean, seriously, why would you think it's a good idea to fly a drone over an airport? 2016, however, promises to be safer. Aware that not everyone who takes control of a drone is a skilled or mindful pilot, legislation has been put in place in the US that requires all drone owners to register their drones. And on top of that, drone manufacturers have been introducing dynamic geofencing capabilities to prevent potentially dangerous or illegal flights. So let's hope the hype surrounding drones has died down and now it's time for them to get down and deliver. There we are, that's what I think will be the big tech trends in 2016. Let's see this time next year how close I was. <laughs>